So you're telling me that the reason the Titans are losing more games than we want them to lose is because of the time that they play the games at noon? Exactly, because the third quarter is the worst quarter. We always lose. You know, I personally study this. Even in the stadium when you're looking there, everybody is kind of slow. And the net point differential for the Titans is the worst in the third quarter, minus 23, minus 19. The offense is not firing. The defense is not doing the job. So if you can find a way to not being stuck at the 12 noon slot, I think we might win more games. But, but aren't most games played at noon on Sundays? I mean, that's, that's football time, right? No, the best teams never play at noon. You know, it's only that teams that are on the bottom play the noon games. The top teams never play the noon games at all. So, you know, we trade players, we trade staff. I think we need to trade times to have the equal opportunity. I even know why the Lions lost. You know, it was later at night. The second half, if you look at the Lions at night, they were sleepy. The Niners were awake. And the second half, the, the Lions never showed up for the NFC Championship. So they were sleepy. They were, it was their bedtime while they were hitting the prime time. So, so some teams know the advantage, some teams don't. So I think everybody needs to be fair about this. So we're talking to Bajoy John on the Root of All Success today. Dr. Bajoy John, who's a, a sleep physician here in Nashville, Tennessee, and he's got some pretty strong feelings about the reason that Nashville, that our team here in Nashville, the Tennessee Titans, is losing more than we want Correct. is because of the noontime. So, you have dedicated most of your adult life to studying and understanding sleep. You wrote a book called Nobody Sleeping, Seven Proven Sleep Strategies for Better Health and Happiness. And uh, you've got Sleep Fix Academy, which offers resources on how to, how to sleep better, get more out of sleep. When did you decide sleep was going to be your specialty? So this is from a very young age. I went to med school when I was 17. So I always knew if I sleep better the night of the exam, I usually perform better. So there was something about getting adequate sleep, you know, before a big performance, before an exam. But what do most of us do? We stay up the night, we burn the midnight oil, we are burning the candle, and we don't do well. So I knew that from a young age, but you know, this is in the 80s, we never talked about sleep, but now we know how sleep is so important. The elite athletes, if you ask the most elite athletes, what is the self-care they do? They all say, we focus on sleep. So I knew from a young age, then as a business owner, uh, you know, as a, you know, as an ICU specialist, I did that for 25 years. I was always sleep deprived, you know, shift work, night call. I was in a bad, groggy mood. And when I, when I lost my mom, I couldn't sleep. So sleep affects all of us in many, many ways. But once you know the superpower and you sleep better, you are fully charged you know, your brain is so fully charged. So that's why I formed the seven, you know, proven and sleep strategies through my own experiences and how to overcome all of that. So if sleep is this important, why are we not taught about it? I mean, I can remember, I remember as a kid very vividly, Dr. I think his name was Vickers. I think his name, he was a dentist in our local hometown who came to the elementary school and did a slideshow on a reel-to-reel -reel projector on how to brush your teeth and how to have good dental hygiene. I remember that very vividly because I, I have pretty good dental hygiene. I think as a result of he taught me how to brush my teeth. But nobody ever came into my elementary school or my Boy Scout group and taught me how to sleep. So what's going on? Why are we focused on that? <laughs> so, so Jason, sleep problems don't hurt like a toothache, right? <laughs> so we ignore those, right? we put it away but it catches up. It will take, you know, many months and, you know, weeks, weeks to months to years before it catches up with you. So talking about children, the lack of sleep is a cry for help. I clearly mentioned in my book, small children, meaning before you leave high school and go away to college, should sleep well. And if a child is not sleeping and all the parents that are listening and the educators and teachers, they should stop everything and pull the child and see why the child is not sleeping. It is a cry f for help. You know, usually there's underlying anxiety, depression. So that's how important. I think all the schools should focus on uh, teaching, um, you know, children how to sleep. You know, my mom taught me how to sleep. And to, she taught me the power of naps, which is coming back now, everybody, you know. So we need to focus. We got to get those kids at a young age, teach them to sleep so they can, you know, once they go out, 
you know, college nobody sleeps. You know, it's, uh, you know, people who schedule, they, they stay up late, you know, schedule the classes late. So we have to teach children before they leave uh, the comfort of our homes. When we are hearing people talk about how much sleep you need, yes. uh, normally it's eight hours is thrown out. Is that actually the real number or is that just a rule of thumb or is, is that just lazy math, lazy science? No, it is science. So we all need, as adults, need about seven to eight hours of sleep. Children need more, babies need even more. So somewhere along the line, it's misconstrued. Some people are short sleepers, like Elon Musk. You know, he only needs three or four hours, and he, that's a gift. Most people like me, I don't know about you, me, I need about seven hours of sleep, and most adults need that much hour of sleep. Because only when you sleep that, that many hours, you will have the cycles and stages of non-REM, REM sleep for us to be adequately refreshed and feel fresh. So once that, that message gets along that only we need less sleep like a few people, then that spreads along the society and then people say, hey, you know, I can sleep when I die. But literally, if you are going on the path, I tell people, you might get your wish. Steve Harvey has a uh, famous clip that's yeah. rolling around on the internet about He's, of course, he hosts the Family Feud, and he always talks to the audience either before or after the show, and he gives these inspiring, uplifting, and funny statements. But he did one on what you just said, yes. like rich people don't sleep eight hours. Yes. And he talks about you can sleep when you're dead. And, and, and I, I did a React video to that and got a ton of views on it because I disagree with him. Yes. I, I think that what you're saying is right. Like We have to prioritize our health and our sleep and the fact that we can sleep when we're dead. Yeah. I, I love Steve Harvey, yeah. don't get me wrong, and I think he's right on most things, but that thing, I think he's wrong. What, why, why, do we, why do we see people like him telling us that we don't have so to So that's sleep? wrong information. See, p the, see, that little bit of people who are doing well, that's not the norm. See, you take that and to make people more productive, the message is, hey, you don't need to sleep much, you need to hustle and work, but no you actually achieve more by sleeping more adequately. So I think he's clearly long, uh, wrong, and I think he needs to be educated. That's a wrong sentence, what he made. He's painting with a broad brush. The brush is very narrow when it comes to less sleep for a few people, right? Like, you know, the classic example. Even Elon Musk, he, he thought, we don't need much sleep because he's like that. Then he finally realized, hey, nah, I'm different. So he went on national TV and said, hey, may everybody sleep more. I'm different. So he, he finally recognized it. So maybe Steve Harvey needs to, uh, to learn about it too. And there's another guy, Robert Hershevet, who's yeah. on one of the sharks on Shark Tank. He's the guy from um, Croatia. I forget, he's yeah, from somewhere in Eastern Europe. But yeah. he, he talks about he only sleeps four to four and a half hours a night. And he believes that his employees should do the same. Like you don't need eight hours. And I heard him talk, and I like Robert. And again, I'm like, dude, that, 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 you're an anomaly. This right. doesn't exist. For me, uh, Dr. John, I, I know that six hours is what I have to have. If I don't have six hours, I can go a day or two getting less than that. But if I don't have at least six, I'm worthless. I can't, I can't function. If I get eight, I feel fine. But if I get more than eight, I actually, it, it works against me. Why, <laughs> why does that happen? Great question. Uh, so. So it all depends on how do you feel in the morning, right? If you slept seven, eight hours in the morning and you feel great, that's the end of the story. You're great. But if you still are tired, then you have a sleep debt. So to answer the question, what happens if you sleep longer? You have more REM sleep in the later part of the day or the night and the mornings. And if you wake up from that, that's not a very restful stage of sleep. So that's why when people, especially when they take long naps or sleep uh, later, you know, till about eight or nine, they don't feel refreshed because you're spending a lot more time in the REM sleep, which is not a great uh, sleep. So we need to be in deep sleep? Correct. The deep sleep is stage three, non-REM sleep. So that happens earlier part of night. So that's why I always tell people who have a schedule. So why do you have to schedule? Because I, I, I tell to people uh, to prioritize sleep between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. because Around 10, between 10 and midnight is when you get that non-REM you know, sleep. And as the night progresses, you go into the REM sleep, which is not the best. So the stage three non-REM is the most sweetest sleep. I call the sweet sleep. And the REM sleep is not very uh, restful. It is uh, you know, another misperception, miscommunication in, in people. Everybody thinks REM is a great sleep. It's not. 
it's good for memory consolidation it's good for healing dreaming but it's not uh it's not good for feeling rested um i'm going to ask my apprentice would you bring me my cell phone i know you're taking pictures but i want to show dr you can walk into the camera i want to show him something so this is uh i use i use a fitbit i wear a fitbit 90 percent of the time i sleep in it it is my it is my alarm clock and i haven't looked at it lately but it tracks sleep. You, or you're, you're familiar with this, I'm oh, sure, absolutely. right? absolutely. That's part of my business. <laughs> so I want to I wanna see, I want to open my Fitbit, and, and I want you to analyze the real Jason Duncan sleep patterns. So, like, here's, here's last <laughs> night. Um, you can see I slept seven hours. It gave me a sleep, feel free to scroll, it gave me a sleep score of 85, which is good. But it looks like my deep sleep is only... Oh, less. very less, hour and 19. Yeah. So you spend a lot of time in, you know, the lighter stages of sleep. So this is a problem, Jason. You might have to see me or we might have to uh, talk. <laughs> what were you doing the night before? <laughs> I just, I, I had a friend over. We hung out on the back porch. We smoked a cigar. We were talked. Were you drinking also? I had one drink okay. and uh, went to bed. No problem. And, and so if you look at, like, I'm sleeping seven hours, 651, 651. Yeah. Like that's six or seven hours is what I get every night. But I have uh, mild, here you go, Justin. I'll give this back to you so you can take pictures and stuff. I have mild obstructive sleep apnea, yeah. and I wear a Moses device. Are you familiar yeah. with the Moses oh, device? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've worn that, I don't know, 10 years. It's yeah. been a long time. And uh, when I first started wearing it, this is a cool, this is, I had, well, I could back up and tell you the whole story. But when I first started wearing that, I started, I dreamt so amazingly and vividly. I, ha I don't think I had dreams in years, it felt like. And it was so crazy. And my wife said she had to check to see if I was alive because I snored so bad. And now wearing that device, you know, I didn't snore. But I, but I, I don't have the same experience I did when I first started using it. I just didn't want to do a sleep pad. Right. Sleep, I didn't want to do one of those no, see, that is, sleep what, apps. What happened to you is scientific, right? See, what happens is in REM sleep, your muscles are paralyzed. And your sleep apnea, because the throat gets even more narrow, and there's more obstruction, your sleep apnea gets worse. So your body is not letting you go into REM sleep. So the moment you get treatment, so whether it's oral appliance, CPAP, there's something called REM rebound or REM rebound. You get more REM and then a lot of uh, dreams happen. So then what happened? Why did it wear out? Maybe the device that you're having is wore out. Right? So, so it's not as effective as it used to be. Or sometimes I give this analogy, like if you have a cell phone and it's, it's a processor is fast, then you get used to it, right? Then you want a faster, see so your new norm is set higher. You need a faster computer or a faster phone. So that's an al analogy. But the number one uh, reason I think is probably you need to retest or uh, re, uh, you know, measure your oral appliance and, uh, you know, uh, get a newer one. I know it's got it's got a it's got an adjustment thing yes. on it where I can adjust mm -hmm. it, and every I don't know six or six or months or so I, I adjust it where it's tighter. It pushes out the jaw, the lower jaw. I think the idea is it pushes the lower jaw a little out further. Correct. But, and also, what happens? Your testosterone might be even lower, so that worsens sleep apnea. And same thing in women when the estrogen drops, you have more prone for sleep apnea. Or if you have gained weight, so there are three things: your you know, the position, you know, they probably wore out or your sleep apnea got worse because of lower testosterone or you gained weight? So many reasons. Well, I've lost a lot of weight, yes. so that's good. Yeah. Um, testosterone is low. I have, I, I, the doctor I was telling you pre-show, yeah. like he did, a, he did a testosterone treatment on me, or not a treatment, but like a blood test to see. And I am, I am low, so I need, to, I need to work on that and I'm working on that. Uh, but the device itself, I probably need to redo, but man, I just don't want to do CPAP. I'm just. I don't know why I'm so afraid of it. I just no, don't want to are, sleep with a machine. No, there are other the treatment devices. There's something called you know tongue device. It's called an Excite OSA. You keep it on your tongue to strengthen your tongue. See the trunks. The tongue is a problem. You know. You know. Uh, in 30 seconds, what happened? The tongue falls back and closes the airway. So there's a word before sleep apnea. It's called obstructive sleep apnea. The obstruction happens because of the tongue. So we're trying to take the tongue out. You know, get out of the way. You either move the jaw, strengthen the you know the tongue or use CPAP, which pushes the tongue. So I have sleep apnea myself. I use the Excite OSA device for that. I don't know what this is. Tell me a little bit about this. So, so the tongue is a muscle. Right. right? So, so you strengthen the muscle, just like you strengthen you when you lift weights. You know, I lift weights, my muscle's a little tight. So the same thing, you send an electrical signal 
to the tongue, so the tongue becomes, you know, the, becomes more tonic and it doesn't become flabby. So when it becomes flabby, it falls back. So I've been using it for two plus years and I don't snore and I, my sleep apnea is gone. So is that something you wear at night? No, it's the first FDA approved device for snoring and mild sleep apnea during the day. You know, I, I'm on my Peloton, I'm on my phone, I keep it in my tongue, I'm done for 20 minutes. I don't do anything, mess with it at night. I used to use CPAP earlier on, but now I use that device. So, so you just wear this for 20 minutes? Yes. While you're awake? Yes. And it just, I mean, I guess your tongue is pushing against, it's like... No, it sends like a, it's like a tense unit. It's uh, Oh, it's electric? Yes. Oh, okay, so, so it's, it's shooting... It's shooting so that the muscles are, you know, more active. Is it battery powered or plug it yeah, in? You just plug into a USB. Oh, okay. So, and you've done that for two years and you don't snore anymore. No, I'm not you sleep snore, great. I'm sleep great. Like your Fitbit would show you have deep sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I'm ready to go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually a little tired right now, now that we mentioned it. <laughs> so you said sleep, we were talking before the show, sleep affects everything. We, we yeah. talked about, we were joking about the Tennessee Titans, the football in general. Yeah. Like noon's a terrible time to play yes. a football game. Yeah. But you said it affects everything. Sex, it yes. affects food, or yeah. food effect, Like, tell, Wait, give, us a, give us a little bit of a, uh, tell us a little bit about the sex you know, we'll keep it PG, but like, how does, how does sleep and sex and all that work together? Just the simple fact, right? You're just tired all the time. You know, you just don't, you're not in the mood because you're tired all the time, right? Where, where you're in the survival, you're tired. So that's, that's number one. So in a serious note, when you have disorders like, you know, sleep apnea, so when you have an apnea, it narrows the, you know, the oxygen level is low because you're not breathing. And that low oxygen narrows the blood circulation to the testes and you don't make much testosterone. So if you look at, uh, there was a study done, if you look at a lot of patients who have sleep apnea, majority of them had, uh, you know, low testosterone from the sleep apnea. So because, you know, the blood vessels are narrowed and there's not enough circulation and you don't make much testosterone, very easy. In fact, one of the major reasons for people seeing in my office is low testosterone. So this is actually, and you have underlying sleep apnea, and, and they have shown people who are treated with CPAP, their tes testosterone actually improves. How about that? So, so you could take, you could get on a CPAP machine or some sleep device like Correct. you're talking about, yeah. and your testosterone can improve. Correct. Because or, I guess conversely, yeah. if you took testosterone replacement therapy, it would also help offset the, the effects of it, right? It's, uh, it's, it, that's where they, it's all interesting. See, what happens when, you, when your testosterone is low, everything sags. So what happens, the back of the throat, the muscles are sagging and just plops in there. So it closes, right? But the testosterone replacement is challenging too because if you have too much testosterone, the muscle and the fat changes and then it can narrow uh, the, the airway. So it has to be done by an expert who knows what the heck you're doing, right? So be careful about testosterone. Low testosterone is bad and increased testosterone is bad for you in regards to sleep apnea. So when I was, when I was a teenager, yes. um, like early teens, 12, 13, like we're talking, I've snored my whole life. Right. There was one trip, we went camping as, as a family a lot, and there was one trip where my brother, my little brother and my mom and dad and I were sleeping in the back of the truck. We had a camper on the back of the truck. And my parents, I, was, I think I was 12 or 13, like woke me up and kicked me out of the campers. <laughs> said you can't sleep here because you're snoring so badly and i tried to sleep in the front seat of the truck bench seat didn't work so i ended up sleeping outside i i, I vividly remember that and then at 19 i did a sleep study at uh, what was baptist hospital st thomas midtown yeah. now and they said oh yeah you have and i slept there like i did the in the bed slept overnight did that sleep study and they said you have very very bad sleep apnea so they get so i had surgery so they took my adenoids my tonsils, my uvula, and then they also like lasered out my sinus cavities. And for, I don't know, probably 10 years, I couldn't even make a snoring noise. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do that physically. But now it's all back, like yes. I can do it. And I went back and had another sleep study, but this time I did it at home. Yes. Home sleep study with the device you wear on your chest. And that's when I started using the Moses device, but that's been about 10 years ago. But um, like for somebody like me, who, who had this early onset sleep apnea, well, I mean, I, you know, I know you don't know because you didn't treat me, but 
what causes that? Like, cause I was, as, I was just a kid. I wasn't fat. I wasn't overweight. I mean, I've always carried a little bit of weight, but I wasn't obese or anything. So what, like, what causes that? Great question. So see the, like I mentioned, there's a word before sleep apnea, it's called obstructive sleep apnea. We usually miss the word, oh, it's called OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. So in children, it's usually the tonsils and the adenoids. So other things could be structural. You know, some people have an overbite so that the jaw is pushed backwards. Some people have big tongue, which blocks in the back. Some people have excess uvula and the, you know, the punching deal back in the back of the throat. All those things, when they're excess, they can cause, you know, uh, they can contribute to the narrowing. So both my kids had, you know, I used to take them to school and they were, oh, they passed out. They had obstructive sleep apnea from enlarged tonsils and adenoids. Both of them had their tonsils out and the adenoids out. They started feeling much, much better. So the sleep apnea is resolved. So in children, uh, you know, it's usually tonsils and the structural problems. So as, as adults, it is weight gain. Weight is equally distributed all over the body. And then some fat narrows the you know, throat. And so anybody who has a big neck, they're likely to have, you know, sleep apnea. That's why I always measure people's neck. So, and then as life goes on, low testosterone happens. So it's a progression. So the, to answer your question, why did you have it? That was a structural problem, tonsil, you got better. And then as an adulthood happened, you have other changes, weight gain, low testosterone, all that happened to you. So that's the natural progression of uh, sleep apnea. So if someone doesn't take their sleep seriously, mm -hmm and they, they have sleep apnea, maybe they don't know it. Most people, I, I would imagine, don't know that they have it. What are the repercussions? Because you said it early on that, you know, the reason we had a dentist come to my elementary school is because toothaches hurt where sleep problems don't hurt until they do. Yes. So what, what are the repercussions of not paying attention to sleep and if you have sleep apnea? I mean, sleep ha affects all organs from top to bottom. So when your brain's not rested, you know, see the, the sleep activates something the, called the glymphatic system, which clears all the muck. As the muck you know, builds in your brain, you are at risk for dementia, right? You are at risk for memory problem. You are, you are not in a good mood. You know, you, you're not in a good relationship. You know, really, you're not happy in your relationship. And you are at risk for errors. Think about all the major disasters that have happened at night. Did you know that in the NTSB data, there is only two-thirds of vehicles, you know, less vehicles on the road, but two-thirds of all accidents happen at night? because people are, you know, sleepy. So it's a major problem. So that's, if you look at the brain part, you know, it affects blood pressure, you know, and, you know, uncontrolled blood pressure can have stroke. It affects diabetes because when you're not sleeping well, you know, the, the adrenaline, the catecholamines are increased and that causes blood sugar. So if you have uncontrolled blood pressure, you have uncontrolled diabetes, you've got to get your, you know, sl you know sleep checked out. The same thing for anxiety and depression. So they have a bi-directional relationship. So if your sleep is poor, you're gonna be more anxious. And if you're anxious, you're not sleeping better. So mental health is huge. Then go down, wait. So when you don't sleep well, the, the hormone controlling or, or diet or appetite controlling hormones are kind of altered. You know, there's two major ones, leptin and ghrelin, which are reversed and you tend to gain weight. And also if you don't sleep well, naturally you're awake more and you eat more. So it affects all parts of the body, head to toe, whether it's your cognition, whether it's how you feel, you know, mental health, you know, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, in your sex life, it affects everything. So we are not paying attention, but, you know, even academic performance, your memory is bad, you know, you're not, you know, kids who sleep more perform better in exams. In athletic, 60% of a, most of the athletes who, who do the athletic sleep screening questionnaire have sleep problems. So, you know, either they have restless legs or insomnia or sleep apnea. So it affects all parts of the body. You see, the message is you can be a better version of yourself if you sleep better. So if we could pull this back and talk practical. Yes. So if we look at practical advice from a very successful sleep doctor, author, coach, speaker in you, Dr. Bajoy John, what are some practical tips that the listeners can take and say, all right, this will make me better sleep, sleep better? Because just going to bed earlier or getting up later is not really <laughs> it, right? There's more to it than that. Yes. So I have in my acronym uh, for, for the seven proven sleep strategies, I have an acronym. 
I'm ready to share if you're ready. Let's go. All right, let's go. It's called Sleep Now. S-L-E-E-P-N-O-W. So easy to remember. The S is the schedule. You know, I talked about it a little bit. Prioritize sleep between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. so that you can get all the stages, um, you know, and cycles. Then the next is the L in the acronym. Low light, low temperature, low noise. So melatonin, we are a factory of melatonin. I don't prescribe melatonin for anybody because we, we make so much melatonin. We need, we, need, we need to know how to harness it. Melatonin is only secreted in darkness and lower temperature. So keep your bedroom you know, at a lower temperature and also dark. The word mel in melatonin means darkness. What, what do you mean by low temperature? 65 what? to 70. 68 is probably optimal. <laughs> My wife is going to hate listen, listen to this because I, <laughs> we, keep it, we keep it a lot warmer than that at night because I'm so hot. Like mm -hmm. I just, I don't even use covers at night yes, during the summertime. Yes. So. I mean, you can split, you can have the cooling systems in your bed, you can adjust that. See, Jason, if you went to a tropical vacation, you don't never sleep better because it's hot. The reason why you're not secreting melatonin, wherever I've gone, I don't sleep better if it's hot. This is the answer right here. All right, so, so schedule, uh -huh. low temperature, uh -huh. low noise, uh -huh. and low light. Yes. So that, I think low light and low noise is probably pretty common. We sleep with a sound machine, we yes. always have for yes. years and years and years. So what's the E? He is the big one, electronics. We're all addicted to this thing, and we're going to fight our way to spend more time on it because it, it gives me everything I need. I don't need, I don't need anything else other than my phone. We are, so where do you get that extra hours by compromising on sleep, right? So I tell people, and also the danger is the light from the, from the devices is telling your brain it's daytime. So I tell people to wean off your electronics at least 30 minutes prior and leave it outside so you're not tempted to pull on it. You know, hey, what time is it? Then you wake up, then it's 3 o'clock, and we start worrying. And you might have a notification or something. You, your mind is... So I tell people, get off the electronics 30 minutes prior and leave it out. I keep my phone. I set an alarm for desired time. I leave it in my bathroom, so I literally have to wake up. It's not near to me. I don't hit a snooze button. So that's the big one. The biggest thing, I can go on for like an hour on that topic, right? But for the sake of time, we'll go to the next one. It's called E. It's called next year in the, in the acronym is exercise. Exercise releases endorphins and also generates body heat. So melatonin is only secreted just prior when our body cools down. But if you're going to exercise close to bedtime, you don't sleep better because your body is still hot. So I tell people at least two hours, ideally four, but minimum two hours prior to going to sleep, don't exercise. So exercise in the morning. Or if you have to, you know, try to exercise well before bedtime. All right. So the last one is the P, S-L-E-E-P, is power off your mind, right? But remember, you can only power off your mind if you give it a chance. You know, you power off, you know, cool down your body a little bit. You know, you're not getting distractions with your phone. And I, I teach two techniques here. Uh, one is called vivid imagination. I'm a huge fan of that. I, I do it myself. I'm the first guy to promote uh, vivid imagination to sleeping. So when you lay in bed, you don't want the abstract. I mean, you don't want the reality. You want the abstract. You want to think about whatever, you know, whether, whether you are the director of a show or whatever character. And I go and become that character. I don't think about the bills or the exams or getting ready for the podcast. I don't think about nothing. I go into the abstract myself. And then also the next technique is yoga nidra. So nidra means nothingness. Yoga is you lay down. It's called the corpse pose. You lay, lay down with your palms high. Like just flat and look up the ceiling and just focus on different parts of your body from their head down. So that's this relaxation. So that's the P in the Sleep Now acronym. Then N O, no to worries. I was uh, talking to Justin. Hey, give me one test, uh, tip. I said no to worries in bed. You know, I tell people to take a dedicated worrying time between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. You know, I was you know looking at your directions and all that last night. But at 8 p.m. I'm getting ready for my bedtime at 10. Right? So dedicated worry time, don't bring your worries to your bed. So this is huge. And write it down by 8 p.m. Hey, I need to resolve this. I'll resolve it in the morning. Right? And see, the power of sleep I'm trying to do is when you have a problem in your life, what do we tell people? Let's sleep on it. You know, we ever, do we ever say let's exercise on it <laughs> <laughs> or let's diet on it? Because sleep is a superpower. It helps to, you know, to heal us. 
you know, memories, uh, you know, conflict resolution. It, it is mystical. It's magical. You know, we dream. So I want everybody to harness that. And we'll go on. The last one is W is uh, win by losing. This is one thing you can win, win. The hustle culture, we are like hustling. You know, we want sleep to be an on and off button. You know, I wish it was. But it, it is a dimmer. You know, you have to really work at it. Slowly dim it. Work at it. So that's, uh, you know, we have met our match. You know, hustle culture met us match in sleep. But if you sleep better, you can hustle better, right? But you don't need to compromise on your sleep to hustle more. So practically, I tell people, hey, when you're entering your bedroom, it's like a TSA screener. You're having your phone beep, leave it outside. You're carrying all your worries to your bed, beep, you leave it outside. So keep it, you know, keep it easy, keep it simple. It will come to you, work at it, you know. I have a course that I offer to people online. So if you want, you know, the sleep now, how to do it uh, online, you can take it. So, I mean, I want everybody, because I've discovered through my own perils, and I'm taking care of more than 50,000 patients in the last 25 years, and I've helped many uh, thousands of patients to sleep better, holistically, without medications. The easy answer is a pill, but, you know, long term, that doesn't help. So with your experience yes. as a sleep doctor and mm -hmm. with this acronym for sleep now, which yeah. is very easy to remember, yeah. is there a target that, it, that people should look for in terms of sleeping? I know you said seven to eight hours, but mm -hmm. should, if somebody's tired and they're having trouble, they're lethargic during the day, is it, hey, sleep more? Or is there some target they should be looking for? Hey, make sure you're doing, other than the things you just said, is there a time, a time allotment that they need to give to sleep? Great question. So when you're not, when you're tired, when you're not sleeping well, it's the tip of the iceberg. So when I see somebody with a sleep problem, I want, I want, I'm asking them these questions. Do they have a mental health problem? Are they anxious? Are they depressed? Do they have a medical problem? The people who have heart problem, they're tired all the time. People who have breathing problem, you're spending so much energy breathing. Then if you're taking diabetic medicines, you know, um, or medicines for blood pressure like diuretics, you're you, using the restroom and waking up, and people with you know, diabetes wake up multiple times at night. So I look up into those causes. And then next thing I ask them is, do you have a sleep disorder? Do you snore? You know, are you, do you have restless legs? Do you move a lot? So I categorize, and then this is what I experience as, uh, as a physician gives me, I go to, it's not just sleep, you know, the lack of uh, thereof is a, is, a, is a tip of something more sinister. So I tell people, hey, if you're still tired after sleeping seven or eight hours consistently, see, most people, if I, you know, if after night a call, I'm tired because I have a sleep debt. Most of the college kids have something called sleep debt. You know, they are going without sleeping. You know, my children in college, they say, Dad, I have a sleep problem. No, you have a sleep debt. So I tell them to come, unplug them, and three, four days they sleep called bed rotting. I prescribe bed rotting. Uh, you know, you need to rot in your bed for a few days, <laughs> get your sleep, and then you're fine. But if you're consistently sleeping eight hours and you're still tired, you might have other problems. You know, pay attention to your body because sleep is the, you know, it's like the guide of something else sinister in your body. So you have developed a very successful practice yes. and I want to talk about the business side mm -hmm. of being a physician. Most physicians yes. are not very good business people. Yes. They're, they're great practitioners and they do really good at serving and treating their patients, but they're terrible at business. Mm -hmm. You and I don't know each other well enough for me to say you're a terrible business person or a great business person, but I know that you've succeeded at a pretty high level because of the way I met you. Yes. Like I know you play in the right circles because we met through some pretty high level circles here in Nashville. But why do you think, let me ask you this first of all, why do you think most physicians are not good business people, are not good entrepreneurs. So physicians, you know, we are a mold of people. Our mindset is different. You know, we are here to help people, heal people. So, so we are not in the business. We never, we never, we, most of us are not good businessmen because our mind is catered towards caring, nurturing. We carry the load of all those people. But somewhere along the line, we have to wake up. You know, me personally, I had uh, four specialists. I was so busy. Somewhere, the, you know, my passion, underlying what passion was to promote sleep. So I had to leave all that. And it's, in the end, it's time, right? You have to have time to, to get those skills. So I had to come out and join 
the mastermind class, get the, you know, because be an entrepreneur, you have to do all that. But physicians' mindset is different. We are born different, uh, more into caring. Uh, that's why we, I think fundamentally, but we can become, but we need, to, we need to be coached. We need to be taught. You know, we are all smart. We, if you we can become a doctor, you know, the discipline and the smartness, I think you can. Uh, but it's a matter of um, time and the awareness uh, that you can be better. So with your practice, how long have you had your own practice rather than working for a hospital or working somewhere else? So I'm in my fourth year. Uh, so, so I do certain days in my practice and certain day on my business. I take time out and promote my, uh, this online business and my book. So I split my time between two things. Well, talk about Sleep Fix Academy because yes. you started that, what, within the past few years? Yeah, last year. Last um, year. So I have my clinic. I'm able to serve, you know, folks. But sleep is a global, I call it the new pandemic. Um, you know, it is affecting all of us in many ways. And the thing is, not many experts are talking about it, you know, the, because like, like you mentioned, we are doctors are working hard. and There's no time. So I made myself that I'm going to make my life's mission to bring awareness to this problem to the world. So I started, that's why I have an online, you know, Sleep Fix Academy. I'm on all the social platforms as Dr. Sleep Fix, always talking about sleep. And see, when you have a problem, first you have to understand. But most people don't realize it because they're not aware of it. You know, I mean, even during this conversation, you saw the impact of sleep can have, you know, on all parts of our body. Many people probably, you know, this is the first time they're he hearing it could affect your, you know, you know blood, blood pressure or blood sugar because I get calls from people after they read my book, uh, that's the great, the most gratifying thing is when, hey, man, I didn't know this is the reason, you know, one guy called and said, you know, he didn't sleep as a child because his dad fed him ice cream every night. You know, he was called a weird child because he didn't sleep because, you know, the simple knowledge that, you know, the high uh, glucose meal, you know, high glycemic foods affect your sleep. So he was so grateful. And the same thing with, I get a lot of calls about the uh, blood pressure medications coming down. So there's a lot of awareness by sleeping better. So with your practice over the last four years, okay. what has been the one biggest surprise about running a business as opposed to just being a physician that you've learned? See, the buck stops with me for everything. <laughs> so, so that's an, another hat I have to wear because the employees, bills, regulations, you know, everything, you know. Uh, so, but, but I'm surrounded by good people. You know, I have the experts in the field. I, when I have a trouble, I ask somebody. And so, uh, plus I've slowed down, you know, I was uh, running at 100 miles an hour doing many things. Now I focus on one thing and uh, that has helped me a whole lot to have a clearer vision in what I do. And what does Sleep Fix Academy offer in terms of if somebody says, hey, I want to I wanna look into this, they can Google Sleep Fix Academy and they're going right. to find you. You're yes. on Instagram as Dr. Sleep Fix. Mm -hmm. what, what do you offer people in Sleep Fix Academy? So whatever I taught, my, you know, I've digressed my book into the seven steps and it's available. It's called the Sleep Now course on Sleep Fix Academy. We will say my course, you know, and there, is, uh, there are a lot more things to learn. You know, if they follow me on, you know, the social media. But if you really want to change your life, it'll take six weeks. It's a six weeks course, self-help. You know, you, have, you can do your uh, uh, progress and find out all the things I talked to and improve on it. And I think, you know, by sleeping more, you are a better version of yourself than compromising on sleep. If you look back over to your, your existence as a, as a doctor and as an entrepreneur, what do you believe is the one key that's unlocked success for you more than anything else? So life, I, I lead my life on this four principle, faith, family, fitness, and friends. Of the four most is faith. So life happens to all of us. So I keep my faith very strong, you know, in my beliefs as a Christian. Uh, I instill that in my, all the, you know, everybody around me, especially my family. I've been reading the Bible for every night for 45 years. Uh, I, I start from cover one to cover the end of that story, end of the Bible. I, I do that every night. So that gives me the discipline. And so if I can do that, I can do a lot of other things. Then, of course, family is most important because you have to be, be content and happy with people around you, right? So you can never be happy unless your people closest to you are happy. Of course, fitness, you know, I work out five days a week. Uh, this is the September is my month. I want to work out every day. Uh, so I'm taking the challenge. So far, four days have been good. 
So I want to work 30 days this month, uh, work out 30 days. Uh, and of course, friends. Uh, so faith, family, fitness, and friends is the four pillars uh, of my, I kept that simple. It's very simple and very complicated, but everybody needs to be aware, uh, you know, uh, life happens to all of us. And sometimes when you don't, faith guides you through it, you know, carries you. So Amen. That's, that, that's the most important thing. And I have great uh, happiness, you know, the joy is in my name, and I share it with every person I meet. Uh, but, but also, I sleep great. So, <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your definition of that word success? Oh, success is uh, the state of uh, success is a state of being. How you comfortable you are at uh, at when you are by yourself. How comfortable you are within yourself, right? So it can mean it's uh, it's uh, for me success is having everything. You know, it's, it's always easier to cry in a Mercedes, right? You need to have wealth. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you need to have family. You need to have fitness. Uh, so wealth is a huge part. Then you can give, right? You can give to other causes you believe in. So it's just not, it's just not one thing. So I tell young people when I'm speaking in my another, you know, another, I also, I also try to mentor young uh, people. You said if you're pursuing something and you're losing yourself, then it's not worth it. You know, you have to have all the pillars and grow, you know, with it. So that's what defines how comfortable you are in your solitude is defines your success. Do you, do you consider yourself, by that definition, do you consider yourself oh, successful? I am the most successful because I feel so content because I have everything what I want to. So nothing else matters. Uh, so I have all the four pillars. I am the most I was telling my wife the other day, I said, I'm the most happy I've ever been. Uh, so, That's so, great. That's yes. really, really good. How old are your kids? Uh, I have a son, uh, 27 and 23. Both of them are kind of normal people, you know, <laughs> responsible <laughs> and successful. So I've raised uh, good children, responsible kids. Are they following in your footsteps to be a physician or are they doing other things? No, they said they saw me work too hard in the ICU. Uh. They said, Dad, uh, you know, but they are in the field. Uh, uh, you know, once in medical sales, uh, you know, he's working here in Nashville for a medical sales company. And my, my daughter is in, you know, in law school. She wants to be in healthcare, you know, corporate. So they're in the allied field, not to be on the ground. I, I can't blame <laughs> Well, what, if you, if you could, as we kind of close our conversation yeah. today, I want you to put your coach hat on for a second and yeah. think about what would you advise an entrepreneur who's listening to the show based on your experience Four years of starting your own practice, now also have a Sleep Fix Academy, being an author. What's your best piece of advice for entrepreneurs? So, you know, the, you cannot settle. You have to raise your bar for the new normal. So then you have to go to the next new normal. But I have a piece of advice. But if you're going raising your bar and if you're falling and you're not happy within yourself, then you need to, that's not the way, right? So we have a gift Whatever you're doing, if you're able to push yourself to the new normal, go for it. But in that process, don't lose yourself. Because I've seen, come across many, many successful people who lose. And I have had personal one-on-one -on -one conversation as a coach and a mentor sometimes. Very, very wealthy, very successful people, athletes, and all kinds of, uh, they've lost something. And that's not worth losing. So make sure, uh, make sure when you're dealing life, you see with both eyes. One eye be the focus on something and one eye be your family. So you have to see with both eyes. And that's the best piece of advice I ever got. And I tell people to do that. Have your focus with two things and you know, don't lose one for the other. Mm, that's really good. Well, congratulations yes. on all your success. Yes. It's an honor to know you. I'm really glad that we met through the local mastermind here in Nashville that we met through back earlier this summer. Yeah. But congratulations on what you've done. Congratulations on the success of your book. I'm looking forward to hearing more about you building Sleep Fix Academy to be a juggernaut to get people back to sleeping well and back to real, true health. So thank you for being on the show. Thanks, man. It's my joy, and I want to spend the good news and spread the good news of sleep by once focusing on that because sleep is complicated. It is the tip of the iceberg with so many problems. So sleep well, be well. I'm on this mission. I'm going all over the world teaching this. You know, my book has already got an award. It's already translated it into another language. So I'm excited about all that that's happening in my life. So let's what, go. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they wanted to reach out? So I'm based in, my office is based in Brentwood. Uh, you know, you can Google my name. It's, uh, I'm available everywhere. Or you can Google Sleep Fix Academy. Yeah, you know. 
or on all the social media. Uh, all right. I'm easy to find. <laughs> well, good. Well, thanks, doctor. So this is the book. So everybody go check this out. Nobody's Sleeping, Seven Proven Sleep Strategies for Better Health and Happiness. And we went over a Cliff Notes version of that today on the show, but there's a lot of really great information here about how to be better at sleeping so that you can be better at everything else, sex, <laughs> food, exercise, life, being better at sports. Well, hopefully the Titans can win a few more games and we can get them to sleep better and play yeah. at a different time. But I want to thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Listener, for listening to the show it's an honor to be able to bring this show to you every single week where I interview very successful entrepreneurs and people that are success, successful in whether it's medical practice, entertainment, law, or whatever it happens to be. It's all about figuring out what is the root of success. That's why I named the show The Root of All Success. And as you heard him talk about that, I want you to go back and listen to what he said. It's very important keeping those four Fs. This is really important. So go back and take a listen to that. And go check him out at Sleep Fix Academy. Check out his book, Nobody's Sleeping. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. Until then, as always, I'm the real Jason Duncan, and Jesus is king. And cut. There we go. We did it, man. Like that? We did it. We did it. That was good, man. That was really good. Thank powerful, you. Powerful, man. That's, uh, that's how I roll. We did a good job. Don't take it off yet. We're going to do a, a promo. Yes, How do you well, like, man? You learn it as a young person? Yeah, yeah. Really good. Really good. What are the four pillars of life? Four pillars of life? Mm-hmm. Four uh, Fs. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll go back and You listen. know what's, uh, what's the title of my next book? Nobody's Listening. <laughs> Nobody's sleeping. Nobody's, nobody's sleep. listening. Faith, family, fitness, and friends. The most important is faith. Because there's lots, so many unknown. You never know, uh, you know, why many things happen. Well, we're going to do a photo. But before we do the photo, if you don't mind doing the promo. Yeah. So what you'll do is that camera right in front of his computer. Yeah. You can sit right where you're sitting and look at that camera. And this could be 60 seconds or less. You just say your name. Mm -hmm. Say my name, mm -hmm. the real Jason Duncan. And say the name of the show, which is the root of all success. Mm -hmm. So if you say those three things, and then whatever you want to say after that. So most people say something like this. Hey, I'm Dr. Bajoy John. I was just on the Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. And, and then whatever they say next is, we talked about this, or the show was amazing, you should listen to it, or you're not going to believe what we talked about here, or you're going to, you know, whatever. And then we're going to use this, it'll be a vertical video that we'll put on YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels to promote the episode when it comes out. So it'll say, you know, click here to listen to the whole show. Does that make sense? Oh, perfect, man. We'll do. So uh, if you're ready, are we recording? Ready? Let's so keep I'll, the book. Huh? Yeah, you can do that too. So I will, uh, I'll count five, four, three, two, one, and then you just look at that camera, do your thing. If you screw up, you want to start over, no problem. We'll yes. edit it all out. Ready? Five, four, three, two. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Bujoy John, the author of the book called Nobody Sleeping, The Seven Proven Sleep Strategies. It's been a real honor to be with the real Jason Duncan and to be on the Root of All Success podcast. We talked about a lot of things. We talked about how to improve our lives. I talked about how we can improve the various facets of our life by sleeping better, whether it be your performance athlete or it could be sexual performance and we can be a better version of ourselves. So please tune in. You will learn a lot than you will ever think of. So sleep well and be well, everyone. Boom. That's it, man. One take. That's it, buddy. Dr. John does one take. He's That's good. It. That's how I roll, bro. Because I do this all day. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.